On January 26th, the shoot was interrupted. She disappeared for three days right before filming her first scenes with Monton. I want to disappear. On screen or off, I don't care, just disappear, she confided to Greenson. The doctor suggested that they meet at his home for discretion's sake. Do you want me to stop? No. Sure? No, it's okay. I just... A large wooden desk with no papers on it. I could easily be alone. It doesn't bother me to be alone. Some people I know... She was surprised not to see any photos of Freud. What struck her most was a painting. A naked woman facing away, serene. Marilyn gazed at her as she would an enigma. She asked the doctor, what is that woman's secret? Well, I always have a secret. Um, Me too. I posed naked. When I was a model, I looked in mirrors or to other people to find out who I was. <laughs> Marilyn doesn't exist. When I leave my dressing room, I'm Norma Jean. Marilyn Monroe only exists on screen. Be any way you want me to be. Why? You're afraid to be filmed because you're afraid your image will be stolen? Greenson asked her. Oh, I know it happens in the country. Too many questions, doctor. I don't know. What I know is that men don't see me. They just lay their eyes on me. Greenson noticed that in between two glances, when no one was paying attention to her, her face seemed to crumple, fall apart, fade. The psychoanalyst must always treat the first session as if it were the last. Everything essential is already there, even if you have to read between the lines. Marilyn said nothing more. She was surprised that he didn't ask her to lie down to see what she looked like horizontally. But it was just as well. She didn't like it when people asked her to lie down. She was afraid of the night, afraid it would never end. She often made love in the daytime, standing up. When you close your eyes in analysis, you start to see again. You begin to relive. With the doctor of words, Marilyn let old images and memories resurface, ones she would have preferred to forget. She was 20 years old and suffering from heartbreak. She soothed her pain with men and women to give her the strength to go on to mourning. To survive in Hollywood, she sold what she could to whoever wanted it. Her body to movie producers who were in a hurry to enjoy it, and the image of her body to fans of porno films. Be sexy, really dirty. This is no doubt what the unknown cameraman said to her in the gloomy Los Angeles apartment. If this short film isn't a fake, it is the first film footage of her. Nothing had changed since. Marilyn was still an image, nothing but an image. For her, enhancing the beauty of her body was the best way to give meaning to her life. She knew she was very beautiful and was immensely proud of her appearance. But at 34 years of age, she felt insignificant. It wasn't just answers Greenson was lacking for a diagnosis but questions. 
He noticed that whenever she was anguished, she would act like a little girl, the abandoned masochistic child. Marilyn provoked people to mistreat her and abuse her. Greenson was concerned. He believed she had the power to destroy him while destroying herself. As the film dragged on, Greenson questioned her about her daily life. She complained about the role she had to play in this film she hated. She evoked her chronic insomnia to justify her drug consumption. The analyst did not hesitate to meet Arthur Miller. He believed that the writer truly loved his wife. At the Beverly Hills Hotel, the bungalow next door was occupied by Yves Montan and Simone Signoret. One evening, Montan entered her room, sat down on the bed next to her, and took her hand. She pulled him down onto her and kissed him with joy and despair. Kiss me, baby. Let's make very rapidly. Montan would regret his giving in. For him, Marilyn was a delightful, guileless child, one who had become enamored of him like a schoolgirl. Thank you. I know. At night, men fall asleep with Marilyn. And the next day, they wake up with me. Montan is merely a puppet in the love story I've fantasized about since I was little. But I'd like him to love me. Greenson advised Marilyn to break it off. She couldn't. That April evening, Simone Signoret was in the race for the Oscar for Best Actress. Simone Signore, rope the top! Signore won. Marilyn was once again forgotten by the awards ceremony. <laughs> when Greenson asked her if this wasn't hard for her, she answered, Reading Freud taught me that failures are often desired by the subconscious. I've known of a so-called happily married couple. Always anguished, as her birthday approached, she had the impression of singing her own life in playback to recorded music. Before shooting one of the final scenes in Let's Make Love, she would write, What am I afraid of? Of not being able to act? I know I can act. I know I shouldn't be afraid, but not being afraid means not being at all. Constantly late on the set, she finished Cukor's film exhausted. One day at Greenson's home, Marilyn arrived half an hour late for her session. You're late, the psychoanalyst said. An avid chess player, he liked openings that destabilized the other player. Well, I don't think I'm late all the time, but maybe it is because she retorted, I'm late because I'm late with everyone. You're not the only one I keep waiting. From the start, with Hawks, Lang, Mankiewicz, Houston, the biggest names in Hollywood, she showed up late for shoots. She had always suffered from a pathological shyness. Have you always been afraid? Greenson asked her. Always. I'd hide. 
I was terrified of appearing in front of the camera. With words, it's so hard and so easy for me with my body. Excuse me while I shake this stuff upside down. It's kind of exciting and attractive. Who's attractive? Who's excited? Girl! Who? Yeah, you're strangling me! Who's exciting? Who's attractive? You. That's better. During the filming of Don't Bother to Knock, she vomited before every scene. The role she played in the film was in fact that of her mother, the impossible mother who abandoned her. It's wicked to come between people. Do you have a doll at home? Yes, Josephine. What if it cried and pestered and spied on you? You'd want to get rid of it, wouldn't you? You'd have to. You turn over and go to sleep. Don't utter one sound. When I was little, no one ever told me I was pretty. People should always tell little girls they're pretty, even if they're not. Greenson thought to himself, she loves to be loved. If her mother had bothered to look at her, she would not need to desperately seek everyone's attention all the time. I was, see, when I was very young, I called every woman I would see. I Let's return to your lateness, he said. Um, Here, you're not on a movie set. I'm not your mother. She answered, being late is a way of making sure that others wait for you, you and no one else. That way, you cannot be replaced. She added that when she was late, she wasn't... She was busy touching up her makeup, her clothes, her image. Her words, too. She confessed to the psychoanalyst that she took notes on what she wanted to say. Yeah, I find I can relax. I think that we're rushing too much nowadays. That's why people get nervous. And... Greenson broke in. No, Marilyn, your being late means I don't like you, Dr. Greenson. I don't want to come see you. In Marilyn's mind, it was more like, you wait for me, you wait for me only. Therefore, you love me. It's always the one who loves who waits for the other. I'm sorry. So sorry. She never again showed up late for a session.